Hi, welcome to my Photoshop Phase YouTube channel. I'm Seth McCullough, retoucher and digital artist. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk to you about banding. I don't know about you, but banding used to drive me insane because it seemed so hard to get rid of. So I had to develop a toolkit for eliminating banding in all different kinds of situations. So what is banding anyway? It's basically when displaying a gradient, Photoshop has essentially run out of enough colors to show a smooth transition from one area to the next. And you can visibly see the edges between the steps of the gradient, and they look like bands of color. So why do we have to get rid of banding? because it's bad retouching. And clients are getting more savvy these days with banding and they know how to see it and call it out. Here's a retouch project I did years ago as an excuse to get myself a really cool pair of Giro bike shoes. Uh, so the shoes have all been cleaned up, background has been cleaned up, all the retouching has been done, but it just doesn't have that drama. So I wanna create a vignette. Vignettes are a great way for centralizing the focus in an image. So I'm gonna bring up a folder, call it vignette, and drop a curve into it and just darken. So this is a common way that I make vignettes a lot of times because it's just so easy and I can adjust the lightness and darkness of the curve. So I just keep darkening until I get to a range that I want and then I start painting in on the mask. And so you'll see with a big feathered brush, this is gonna create the lighter area behind the shoes. Um, and I can keep adjusting in this way uh, uh, forever in the image because it's non-destructive. I'm just painting on the mask of the curve. Cool, looking better, but let's say that that's a little too dark. I wanna brighten it up. I'm just gonna keep stacking curves up in this way until I get a vignette that I really like. So this one I'm gonna brighten because I wanna bring more brightness into the center rather than painting back in on the masks of the curves below. So you can probably start to see some of the banding coming in here because I'm stacking these curves up and that's the way you introduce banding. I'm going to zoom in. It's mostly happening in this kind of medium gray transitional area here. It can be pretty subtle so you have to be looking out for it because it can be easy to miss sometimes. So now you can see I've just quickly and easily really made a cool vignette. I really am liking this now. It's adding a ton of drama to the image. But of course, the client comes back and says, it's too dark overall. I want you to brighten everything. So if I don't know any better, I might just drag a curve up overall and brighten. And boom, you've got bands. So this is called cross curving. Cross curving is when you stack up a bunch of curves or adjustment layers on top of each other and the ones above contradict the ones below. You might have caught me doing that. It's kind of a bad workflow and it's a recipe for banding in an image like this. So I've got all these curves here that say, let's darken the image. And then I drag two on top that say, wait, wait, let's brighten the image. That's normally a bad workflow, but if you want to work in that way, I'm going to show you how to fix it. The most common way to reduce or remove banding in an image is by introducing noise. So with the mask on the first curves layer selected, I'm going to go up here to filter, noise, add noise. Now this is going to bring up the add noise dialog. And with the distribution set to Gaussian and the amount set to four, this is something you'll have to play with for different images. But for this one, it works. I'm going to apply that noise to that mask and here you can see turning it on and off to some small degree it's already starting to reduce the banding now you can kind of see the noise that's been added to that mask it's going to become more apparent um, how it's working once i start adding it to these other masks so same thing and you can just use the same noise setting by going to filter add noise because once you've run it once it's going to be at the top and you can kind of see in this area here, those bands starting to disappear when I apply noise to the masks. 
Now I want to apply the same amount of noise to all these masks. And since I'm lazy, I'm going to use a shortcut key. Control Alt F on Windows will apply the last filter you ran. Check it out. Before, after, before, after. You can see these bands just magically disappearing from the image. One more mask I've got to hit here. Control Alt F applies that same noise to this brightening curves mask. So you can see now that did a pretty good job of getting rid of all the bands in this image. Um, I'm going to back up here in my history palette, show you before and after. So bands, band free. Bands, band free. So banding can be introduced into images in a lot of different conditions. I'm going to show you how to solve them. But the first and most important lesson is just knowing that when banding is introduced via curves in this way, you can destroy banding by just throwing some noise at the problem. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a like down below. And if you want to see more, uh, please subscribe to the Photoshop Phase YouTube channel.